Okay, so I'm going to talk today about a very interesting feature of cave art that we find about 25,000 years ago across Europe. And this is these human hand images that are missing parts of their fingers. So, we find these at seven sites, five in France and two in Spain. And scholars have been debating these hand images for decades now. Some of them think that maybe they're just handprints of people that have folded over <laughs> fingers, and these folded over hands represent some kind of sign language or accounting system. But there are a few reasons to think that these actually might represent hands that are missing fingers. And so since this is a short little talk, I don't have time to go into all of those different reasons, but I just want to highlight the one that's most compelling, and that's at the most famous site, Grot Gargas. We actually have handprints in hardened mud that are missing fingers. So fairly compelling, but enough at least that we think we should be considering if these hands are actually missing fingers, why? And so to answer that question, we looked in the ethnographic literature. We identified 121 traditional societies across the globe, in every single continent across the globe, that engage in finger amputation practices. So when we looked at these 121 groups, we had 104 that had detailed enough information that we could see why they were doing these practices. So then what we did is we took these 104 and four 104 groups and characterize these different practices into why they do this. So first we split the reasons into whether the participant is alive or deceased at the time of amputation. If the participant's alive, it's either voluntary or involuntary. So the voluntary reasons involve sacrifice, mourning, group identity, medical reasons, and also as a marriage custom. For practices where it's involuntary, this could be a punishment, or as some kind of veneration or to create a magical tool. When the participant is recently deceased, it's again split into whether their group members, maybe their family members, would have actually amputated the finger or whether it was someone outside of their group. If it was a group member, this could be some form of offering to their deity. And if it was outside of their group, it might be some form of trophy if you vanquish someone in a war or another kind of talisman, worshiping object type tool. So when we considered all of the contexts of why people engage in these practices, how many of these fingers would be removed during these practices, and we compared it to these images in the Upper Paleolithic Europe, we decided that the most plausible reason that could be associated would be sacrifice. And one of the main reasons for thinking this is the context of these cave sites and what's been argued to be um, a main component of these cave sites, which is that they represent um, remains of religious rituals. Scholars have said that perhaps these represent animism or shamanism and that they even sometimes go as far to say that they might be sanctuaries, shrines, or churches. And particularly, these types of religious rituals have been argued to be dysphoric or negatively arousing. They're in these dark, twisting cave environments where images are supposedly placed to emerge quickly out of the darkness and has been argued that participants might have been using mind-altering drugs. And so the fact that these could be dysphoric experiences is particularly significant because it's been argued and shown that these types of dysphoric rituals can really bind group together, groups together, to the point that you might even be more hostile towards people who are outside of your group. So what are potential implications to if we have this form of ritual fingers, um, ritual sacrificial finger amputation in the Upper Paleolithic? Well, it could be that we have increased cooperation amongst these groups. They're really binded, bound together by this form of dysphoric ritual. And this could be to the point that they might be hostile to outgroups. And that potentially could have played a role in why modern humans could outcompete other non-modern hominids, such as the Neanderthals. So really, this research doesn't provide us with a lot of questions or sorry, it doesn't provide us with a lot of answers. It provides us with just more questions that we can then further ask. 
And if you've got more questions about this research, there's lots of places you can read it, such as all of these, as Ingrid said, all of these news sources, and also the paper that was just released. Thank you.